Okay, Michael, you're back. You can you can hear me. I hope I won't disconnect this time. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> um, okay, let's see if we can get this right. Can you see my screen now? I can. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, so Nesto, it's basically about uh, changing the way we are consuming uh, bottled gas. Uh, maybe not of an issue in, uh, in Boston where you are, but uh, here in Portugal, you still have 60% of the population that is depending on those uh, gas canisters. And uh, it's a fact that it's still a very old uh, business. It didn't change in the last uh, 15 years. 50 years, sorry, it's paper-based, it's uh, not efficient, it's not, um, uh, it's not um, uh, effective uh, either. You spend a lot of time uh, back and forth trying to, uh, to check if your customers are at home when you are making the gas cylinder delivery. Um, you, get, you, you can't see uh, the gas uh, through the bottle. You can't see if it's empty or right just by looking at it. And uh, still two thirds of the people are getting a, a cold shower once in a while. It's kind of a, really, uh, it, it's a pain. So basically using a digit, uh, connected, an IoT connected scale, um, we're able to monitor the weight of the gas, uh, know when it's gonna end, and use this data to optimize the, the delivery of the gas canisters. There is an, another problem, which is uh, today, the, all the distribution is, uh, is outsourced, so the, the brand doesn't know the, the customer anymore. They don't know where they are, they don't know how much they consume. This knowledge is, uh, is blocked by the distributor. I'm proposing uh, gaining uh, back this uh, this uh, knowledge and this data uh, through a through the through a connected app of course and through the the, the monitoring we can do uh, gas canisters at the end it's about giving a, um, a better user experience uh, increasing uh, loyalty for the brand increasing market share as well uh, and reduce uh, churn and all, also of course uh, um, reducing the distribution costs the business model is to sell the hardware uh, to the brand. They can eventually uh, resell them to their customer or even offer them to win a new customer from uh, the competition. And I get a delivery fee for each uh, cylinder um, that is, uh, that is uh, delivered to the customer. There is, a lot, of course, a little bit of competition here in Boston. For example, uh, uh, there is, uh, I think, uh, Tank Utility that is doing something a little bit similar. But the thing is, I'm uh, using uh, more recent technology that is cheaper, so it's uh, using uh, NB-IoT. Uh, and it, it's getting to a price point where it, we can have such a device entering the, the home of the, of the end user, which wasn't just possible before. Um, I'm also presenting a, a complete solution. So it's not only the scale for the, for the end user, it's the whole platform. The distributor will also uh, uh, we will uh, gain advantage of uh, using the, the system and I have also in the roadmap the possibility to monitor the because here in Portugal and in other places in the world you can also buy your own cylinder at the gas station. I have also a product to uh, money to sensorize the, the rack where the bottles are kept because the, the truck that are making the delivery are making the delivery for both uh, type of customer, the one that is uh, getting delivered at home and the one that is fetching the, gas, the, the cylinder at the gas station. So we have a complete view of the, the whole system and we can get uh, more uh, saving out of it. Uh, I'm working with an uh, with experienced guy in the, in the gas industry uh, and that goes also for, uh, for uh, medical and in industrial gases you can do that for beer, for chemicals, a lot of things, basically. Uh, we receive already a smaller investment. Um, this is for the Portuguese market. I won't enter into details. It's not very interesting for you, but I, you still, as I mentioned, still have 60% of the population on gas canister. It's the highest consumption per capita and the highest price in Europe. So it's a good place to start. I already came to the conclusion that the big guys, they won't, uh, they are not really interested in moving the market, but the smaller guys, which is uh, the brand I'm uh, talking to, uh, to offer them a way to, 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 to uh, increase the market share. They are, they are uh, willing to risk 
a little bit more and have a different business model. So uh, this is a huge market, really huge market. Uh, there is some places where I wouldn't, uh, uh, I wouldn't go. Um, for example, in the States, you have those big prop and uh, tank. This is not my market, clearly. But if you go to China, to Brazil, to Mexico, there is a lot to do. Uh, the, the, the focus is in Asia, where, it, where it's still growing 6% uh, per year. Um, so I received uh, around 47, uh, so, sorry, 45,000 uh, 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 euros, and I'm looking for, uh, for half a million to do the, the next step. And that's about it. Yeah, so I'm open to question. Thank you very much. Amazing. So we'll look forward to uh, comments from, from the crowd. Uh, you have one uh, potential buyer, Michal, is, uh, is loving the idea. So that's absolutely great. Cool. And uh, yeah, Bruce. So um, maybe, maybe you, I missed this, but uh, what's the, how is the scale uh, internet connected? Is it Wi-Fi to the network in the, where, it's, where it is, or is it a cellular, or you have a, a variety of connections? So uh, we, we started by uh, using uh, uh, Sigfox, so it's an LP1 network, but yeah. we came to the conclusion that the network was not totally uh, there yet. We are doing now um, trials with NB IoT. Uh, mm -hmm. The price of the devices are clearly going down. We are speaking of module that you can find for less than five euro, mm -hmm. and the connection would be something like uh, two to three euro per year, so it's getting really interesting. Now, there is an issue because the, the cylinder is on top of the scale and the, the antenna doesn't like that very much. So we may came to the point that we have made actually a stupid scale and the smart hub that is communicating with a short radio between the two. And then this, this hub can be placed. Uh, uh, first, it can be visible uh, by the customer. So we can have maybe some LED that is giving you the, the status of your bottle and people have can, can uh, prefer to have something to look at because if it's uh, forgotten under the, the gas canister, maybe it's not that interesting. It's also two other problems. You can get it uh, in a better place for uh, radio frequency, mm -hmm. for uh, the condition. So it's, it's not on the ground, it's a little bit higher. You can have it maybe uh, closer to a window. And the third point that it solves, it's also the autonomy because then you can plug that in a, in a power outlet and then you can, you can uh, even use uh, uh, former technology where, where the NBAT uh, is, isn't there yet. That's, so that could be also, that, that, that's a possible way to do that. Sure, okay. Yeah, no, that's great. And um, it, the, it's the gas company though that owns the scale, right, in general. And so they're responsible for the, if it is a cellular MBIO, then it's really the, the gas company that's paying the service fee or the communication fee from... That's from that hub up to the, through the internet and to their back. Oh, that's correct. That, that's part of the delivery fee. The communication is included. Yeah. Also, I would like to try to keep the ownership of the scale, but because I, I could uh, later promote the, the switch of brands. But at the beginning, yes, it makes sense, I think, yeah. to send that to the brand. You mm -hmm. know, correct. Yeah, great, uh, great IoT application again. Uh, and have you developed an app? Um, I mean, does anybody need a cell phone uh, to either? Is it the gas company um, a well, delivery that, guy that has that has the app on his phone, so he knows where he's going to do the next delivery, or is it the actual person in the home or the or the office that needs to monitor us at all? So that's a very good point. There, there is actually both version. Uh, the the delivery guy would have uh, his uh, his work planned on the on a mobile app, but we have also the possibility to give the location of the of the delivery guy to the next uh, customer. The, the same way you get an Uber today, you would uh, you you can see your distributor approaching. You can uh, put your dog on a leash. You can open the the gate. So it, it is the transaction. You can have also a digital payment, of course. But the thing is, here, uh, a lot of people that are using gas canister are people that are living in the countryside, maybe they're a little bit older. So the solution should work without any smartphone, which means that if the scale is detecting that the gas level is low, you just receive a, a, an SMS and then you can, you can uh, reply, yes, I'm available for the, for the delivery uh, tomorrow at 10. That that's would be the idea. Great. Great. Thank you. Excellent. 
So we have a comment from Ganesh that is asking if the gas cylinder gets loaded with other dead weight, like object kept on top of the cylinder, how will Nesto know? Uh, so that the um, we, we we can monitor the the weight of the canister on a re regular basis. So if we see a dramatic uh, decrease, then we can probably uh, notify the user that something is wrong. Uh, we are we can also use actually the decrease uh, on the weight, uh, the monitoring of the the weight decreasal to uh, identify uh, leaks. That's another application. I'm trying to see if, we, if I can use uh, weight sensors that use nanoparticles because the consumption is much lower and we can do almost continuous monitoring. So that would be an application where actually the device could help improve the, the, the safety of the, of the gas, uh, bottle gas usage. Um, Yes, and that's that's to try to answer the the, the question from uh, Ganesh. Actually, the 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 scale is smart enough to detect when a new cylinder is uh, is uh, is on top of it because it will wake up with uh, an accelerometer, of course, um, and we will try to do a, a check of the weight. So, if the weight is subsi substantially uh, different, then we can uh, detect that we have a, a new bottle on top. Excellent. Uh, you have a comment from Michal, uh, and it's basically a good comment. Actually, it's uh, it's it's the, the, if something is gonna uh, my my intuition is that if something's gonna kill this project because I love this project, this excellent project. Uh, as a side note, I was in Espino uh, a month ago, uh, Michael, and uh, the gas kept on uh, going out, and I called Jaime, the Airbnb host, tell him <laughs> what's going on, and he came one day after. It was a total mess. So in Portugal, it, it is a giant problem. Uh, so Michal is asking about uh, one of the resistances that the consumer might have, which is basically replacing uh, the gas canister before it's totally empty, which is something that everyone would think about. Of how, like, the, the nice thing of the current situation, which is flowed, is that you only replace the gas when you're out of gas in the shower and you're done. Like you know that you. So how do you actually manage this thing? It's nice for the gas brand because they're actually selling you twice the, the same, uh, the, the, the gas that is uh, at the end of the bottle. Uh, when it goes back to the filling line, they are just topping up the, the canister. So it's cool because they are selling you twice the same product. But it's not really nice for the customer. So, and it's not very nice, especially because you, you will get a cold shower. And this is not something that uh, anybody like about gas canister. So here the idea is to try to be able to monitor when the gas is about to end. And just before this happened, we make the change. And the, the, the quantity that is left in the, in the gas is something that is low enough to be uh, compensated by the saving we get from knowing the fact that we have to substitute your cylinder uh, in two or, or three days. That's the idea. So the, the idea is really to try to emulate the piped gas experience, but with bottle gas. Not too. I, I still think that over here, Michael, you're going to have a problem because thing, people love to um, exploit things to the maximum. And if they feel like that even they lose 2 or 3%, that's a loss. So I would just think about this point for the future and see if there is, because you're going to have, the, those are the resistances that will make people say, I buy or not buy. And sometimes we do psychological decisions that are not Correct. Like, like you said, everything that you said is rational, but people are saying, no, I'm going to lose 4% of the gas. No way. So if there is a way to kind of rebate or give, uh, uh, give this for a future use or whatever. Back, yeah. I think it's a great idea to credit back to the customers because it's also a way to, to still uh, uh, have, have him as a customer. So he won't change the, the brand if you know that he gets what was left in the canister back. That's great. Uh, and Michal is also asking if users can monitor the weight themselves. Is sure. it transparent? Sure. Yes, yes, totally. Yes. That's great. Uh, good. Uh, and the Ganesh is saying something that is also relevant in Portugal, that in the, the problem is addressed by having a spare uh, uh, fielded cylinder, uh, which we had in the Spino also. I didn't know what to change it, but uh, it's something that you, uh, the, the idea is that everything you receive here, Michael, is basically the resistances of the consumer. And this is exactly what's going to make 
The, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree. But for example, there is a lot of people here in Portugal that have small homes and that don't have space to get a spare canister. So it's good if we can uh, give them the insurance that they, they will get a new canister bef before the one they are using is going to end. Yes. Uh, one more thing that I think on resistance is, is some people are going to be worried about theft. You know that uh, you know if you have this, and sometimes those things are outside of home in the garden or whatever. So it's also worthwhile to think if there is a way to kind of uh, 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 not make it so easy to to steal it in by uh, by a lock or something might be relevant as well. Uh, and uh, I would think of a situation here since this is experimental of not charging for the device. I don't know how to do it. Uh, but actually basically saying in a way, um, putting everything on the fee and only on, and basically saying, look, you're not paying as long as you keep the device and we can take it in the end. Because I have a feeling that people are like, in the beginning, there are going to be resistance. So even, even charging 20 euros is going to be a little bit problematic. So if there is a financial model of doing it without charging for the device, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it makes a little bit uh, of... Uh, I agree. You can you can do, do the same that you are doing for a cylinder. So you, you just have a deposit and the, the customer will get back the deposit if he don't want the service anymore. That should solve the problem. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Astoria is also bringing again the point of, and, and I think it's, it's an interesting point of the, the use, to know exactly how much everyone has used so they don't lose anything. Uh, psychology is a very mixed thing and people would actually amazingly prefer to get stuck in a cold shower, not being able to cook all day, just to know that they took full advantage of, uh, of those things. So I think those points are very, very interesting. I love the project. I think it's a great project. And I, I had this pain, so it's uh, basically in Portugal, especially, especially so. Um, just as a side note, I really like also that you had the, uh, the slide on the team which is something that I would recommend to Billy and Ganesh to also put some kind of a slide on the team. This is always something that people are asking you uh, about. Uh, and the milestones, so milestones and teams are two slides that usually you must have. Um, so that's absolutely great. And one more uh, good thing, uh, Michael, is, is the design. So Billy and Ganesh, this, this, one, this, this one won the design, uh, design presentation uh, prize for me. So just... Uh, have a look on the style because it's, it's pretty relatively easy to do a presentation like that if you're if you're pitching and uh, it gives another vibe to uh, to the presentation. So that's uh, that's absolutely great. Um, great. So wow, today we had really good presentations. I, I think it was our, our best uh, best uh, batch so far. Um, and basically, I forgot to mention this uh, this uh, uh, pitch event is actually sponsored by uh, Ansys that made this uh, possible. So if any of you are working on anything that has to do with uh, uh, maybe software simulation, maybe you want to build a virtual prototype, I'm sending you a link on the chat to the ANSYS startup program specifically customized uh, for startups, for software simulation, and, uh, and uh, uh, building virtual prototypes. So Michael may be relevant for you, Ganesh, Billy, and all the others that are here. So this is uh, the link that, uh, that I shared over here. Here, we're going to send it also in an email after. And we're doing those events once a month. I think it's great for all of you to, you know, to show up and uh, just learn from the mistakes of other people and uh, what do they do and so on. And also to use this as a networking event. So uh, basically, it's great to, to have you here. And hopefully, every month, we're going to have a crowd like this and uh, this quality of presentations. Um, Bruce, anything I neglected to say before we zoom out? No, great uh, presentations today. Uh, Ganesh, send me your uh, email or send me an email and then I'll, um, I'll get you set up with the, uh, the meetup that we have on Thursday night. Hope you can join us. And uh, sorry, the other uh, gents can't join us in Boston, but uh, if you're ever going to be in Boston, uh, let me know. Excellent. So thank you everyone for arriving. Hopefully see you here uh, also next month and uh, excellent presentations. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye everyone.